for Deputy Administrator, Lori Gover. spirit that we uh, all know and love. We love it here at the Kennedy Space Center. We love it across the country and around the world. We are great explorers. We are an exploring species. And just imagine as you're launching, uh, watching the launch this morning, if you could have been there when Lewis and Clark were first venturing out across the country. We have the technology now through all of you so that the whole world can experience this beginning of exploration as we launch the Mars Science Lab with its amazing Curiosity rover. And what about Curiosity is very similar to that discovery for on the Lewis and Clark mission, is the whole world is interested in our results and what we are doing. And helping us explain what we're doing and inspire that next generation of explorers is our next guest. We are so happy to have him here to join in the launch to help communicate the inspiring message of science and technology, discovery and curiosity. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Will I Am. <laughs> How you guys doing? That's pretty. You guys, that was pretty awesome. We worked on it. Oh, sorry. You may speak. You may speak. Oh, so it's it's an honor to be here. Um, I always dreamt of coming in and seeing a rocket leave the planet. Um, most people are probably wondering what I'm doing here. But earlier this year, I had a TV program on ABC called uh, Science and Rock and Roll. I am first. You guys see that? And uh, I partnered up with Dean Kamen because um, he's like a hero to me. And his program, US First, teaching kids STEM education and having them compete with the robots just blew my mind away to see this community of, of young kids from the ages 9 to 15, 18 doing amazing things with, you know, computers, writing code to build a robot. So I told him I wanted to help out and spread the word and asked him if I could help him make it a TV program. And he said, there's no way it's going to be on network television. They don't think science and robotics is cool enough. So I said, you know, maybe you guys have the wrong people doing it. Maybe they will anyway. So... But what I realize is, when it comes to science and popular culture, most people think it isn't cool. So I said, you know, how much does it cost to buy the time myself? So I bought the time from ABC and did a TV program. And got my... Because a lot of times, you have to take risks. You have to do things that are out of the norm to do things that are out of the norm. Yeah. So I did that, and I uh, got all my peers and all my friends to, you know, shine a light on why they feel science is important. Um, I, and what, what made me want to do it is I saw this TV program called uh, Waiting for Superman, um, and my mom, she went to that high school, and I, I was supposed to go to that high school, but I got busted out to Brentwood Science Magnet, and that, those schools changed my life. And uh, that movie haunted me because it was waiting for a guy with tights to change, the, you know, waiting for Superman. He, Superman is showing up. He got on tights. So, <laughs> so I wanted to change my, my community. So I asked Dean Kamen what would it take to have a U.S. first robotics program in Boyle Heights, where I'm from. And just because U.S. First Robotics is in Boyle Heights doesn't mean the kids are going to want to do it. So I said, well, I have to make this cool. So I did the TV program, and that, that's what got me. Yeah. 
if you bring the emoji to get the kids excited, and that's where I've, that's where I got the call from. Uh, I'm used to that on stage. <laughs> Give me the mic. <laughs> um, that's when I got a call from, uh, from Charlie Rolden. I was like, wow. The dude came and was like, well, a fellow by the name of Charlie Rolden is going to call you on the phone. So I was talking to him. He said, you know, we, we would really like to put your mind um, on how to continue to promote STEM education. So then he hooked me up with Leland. And Leland and I were, were, were talking, and, and Lars introduces to Lars. Come on, Lars. And we've been on this mission um, and uh, came up with this program called SYSTEM, which stands for Stimulating Youth Around Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Because STEM, it sounds cool, but that's not really a cool word, you know, STEM? But SYSTEM, the new system to, to get this whole new youth, this movement, to take what's happening in the U.S. first and amplify it and grow it and make it even bigger. Um, in America, and that, that is a new system, so bringing those programs in inner cities in areas like Palisades, which isn't a ghetto, but doesn't have a robotics program in Palisades. So in my, in my in the way I look at it, it is a ghetto, because it's lacking of programs that are, take youth and take American culture to a totally different level. So Palisades needs system, Compton needs system, East LA needs system, Americans, youth, we need a new system, and that's what that is. Um, so, yep, that's what I'm doing here. So, did you, did you put together a song or something? You... So then I wrote this song called, uh, it's called Reach for the Stars, and uh, I came up with these kooky ideas of how to get it out. Um, and then ran into some some uh, things, but when uh, what that means is uh, my ideas could happen. But we are going to release the song when the when the when the rover lands on Mars. Uh, the song's going to be released. Um, it's called Beach for the Stars. I have this kids choir and uh, this twenty five piece orchestra. Um, Try to you know I didn't want to put like computer beat with autotune. I don't want to do that. I wanted to have like human collaboration and, and uh, I'm so proud to, to have put together this, this huge orchestra with these kids. It's, it's amazing. I wish I could play right now, but after when, when Rover Lions is going to come out. Oh, some of the lyrics. Um, one of the lyrics to the song goes, um, I I'll say the lyrics. <laughs> Because it doesn't sound right, you know, it's a choir. I can't really choir my voice. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, I know you say the sky is the limit. No, I'm sorry. Why do they say the sky is the limit when I've seen footprints on the moon? I know the sky might be high, but maybe it ain't really that high. And I know that Mars might be far, but maybe it ain't really that far. Let's reach for the stars. So it, when, it, when a group of children sing that, Showed you that the sky is not the limit. Stop saying that. You're lying to them when you say sky is the limit. You know, let's reach for the stars, the light, and the energy, and um, connectivity. Let's keep moving forward past the things that we've already accomplished. So that's what that song's about. And I'm proud to legal turn it. And when it, when the rover lands on Mars, I, I can't wait for that song to be released. Yeah, we think about. You know, STEM and all that. We also think about the arts and the music and how this is just one continuum, how we bring all these different things together. So you have a kid who's interested in being a, a musician, but there is math and music. If you know math, you know music and vice versa. So how can you tweet about getting the, the artist one of these and the dancer one of these and the people that don't even, even know how to spell STEM to think about what's embedded in the music, what's embedded in the art? and to get those scenes out there in the Twitterverse to help them get inspired and motivated. Yeah, and the cop, you know, the arts, when science and art is married, we create wonderful things. The industry that I'm in, 
without science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, we wouldn't have no music industry. Without people like Nikola Tesla, there would be no radio. Without, you know, RCA, you know, creating NTSC, there will be no television. So, moving forward, STEM, you need arts. And that's STEAM, for science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. So, uh, that's what's going to help amplify STEM, is, is the arts. And that's STEAM. And that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs>